Well, we did Persona 5 Royal last week. Now it's time for Kingdom Hearts to get its own ranking list. And I gotta say, I've really been looking forward to this one. Now, unlike the last one, which was more of a send-off for my Persona 5 Royal videos, you know, for the time being, I'm still gonna make more Kingdom Hearts vids down the line. Just gonna be mixing in more RPG and JRPG related content to make this channel more than just the Kingdom Hearts and Persona channel. So, hooray for that! Now, since I'm only ranking the ones I played, I'm not adding the phone games on here, since, you know, as I've mentioned before, I've never touched them. Maybe one day, but I've rambled enough for an intro. Like and sub, shameless plug and yada yada yada, let's get started. Ha <laughs> ha! Bet you thought that 358 would be at the bottom of this list. Well, not gonna happen, because ReChain has recently taken the title of the worst Kingdom Hearts game for me. Funnily enough, I used to love this game as a kid, and only through replaying it nowadays do I see its massive flaws. The biggest complaint I can levy at it is the combat, because man oh man did they butcher it in comparison to the GBA version. They took the tightly compacted 2D arena combat and stuffed it into a 3D arena with way too much space that they reuse for every enemy encounter which makes you grow really sick of seeing the same goddamn arena each time you have to fight a basic ass heartless mob. Alongside the empty feeling battlefields, adding on to this is how much worse the combat is. The GBA version's combat is one of my favorite combat systems in the franchise. It's smooth, fun to master, and has some crazy split second gameplay. And a lot of that is in part thanks to the 2D arenas placing you right into the action. So without those compact arenas, the combat just feels slow and boring, to the point where battles become something you just start to dread instead of feel excited for. The 3D remake also makes you see just how big and needlessly empty the rooms you create are. For comparison, the GBA version did a great job with hiding the room's emptiness with things like a top-down camera and making traversal from room to room incredibly fast. The 3D remake has none of that. So you're just stuck with a bunch of boring, lifeless arenas with no depth to any of them. I could go on and on and on about all my other problems with this game, things like the horrid voice acting for some characters, or how this game requires some really stupid shit to get certain cards, but that would take way longer than needed, and I want to get to the other games sometimes this millennia, so let's just move on. Yeah, I may no longer see this as the worst game in the franchise, but it still isn't a game I super enjoy and can call one of my favorites. Now, there are things I enjoy about this game, like the multiplayer and of course that fantastic story, but that's not really enough to save everything else. For one, the combat is really annoying. The idea of Keyblades having specific attack combos is an interesting idea, I admit, but they don't really do much to further that concept. And as a result, it just leaves combat feeling very stiff and unfinished, which is real bad with a series as combat focused as Kingdom Hearts is. Another problem this game has is with its level design. Unlike other Kingdom Hearts games, Days relies on a mission based format, which each level requires you to complete certain missions in order to progress the story. An interesting concept, sure, considering that you are playing as an organization member, but this in turn turns levels into just basic as hall, hell pathways, and sucks out any charm of exploring Disney levels as an organization member. Not that, you know, there really is anything worth exploring as every single level feels incredibly cheap and boring to both explore and look at no matter how hard you try. 358 is a game that very much feels like they were trying to tell a story far, far more than they were trying to let you play a game. That makes sense. Just, and if it doesn't, just pretend it does. From one DS game to another, Recoded is able to beat out 358 solely due to the fact that the combat is way more fun to play in comparison to 358. That doesn't save it from having its fair share of problems, don't get the wrong idea. The first and most obvious is the story. It's very, very, very rare 
I ever call any story in anything so stupid it didn't need to exist. And man oh man, Recoded, you made it onto that list. I'm impressed. It's quite a feat when one of the only other games on that list is Shadow the Hedgehog. And second of all is the final world. I hate this world with a burning passion. I've bitched about it before and I'm gonna do it again. You should never, ever lock your normal ending or any ending of any game at all behind a stupidly ridiculous requirement like finding 18 fucking different endings for one level. It's pointless, tedious, and a stupid idea that needs to never appear again. It is so frustrating that the ending is as annoying and tedious to get as it is. Because if it was better, it would actually be much higher on this list considering just how fun the combat and level design is. Especially that command deck combat. That's just, just chef's kiss right there. Plus, they were just so creative with so many levels. Like Alice becoming a stealth section or Olympus being a turn-based RPG. Never let it be said they weren't creative with their ideas. Plus, this was the only game where you got to fight Roxas until the final mix release in the West on the PS3, so it gets some points for that too. Time to talk about another handheld game. Yeah, to be honest, a lot of Kingdom Hearts handheld games had some pretty annoying mechanics in them that held them back from being the juggernauts they had the potential to truly be. And Dream Drop has that in the form of the drop mechanic. It's really irritating to have to both focus on a surplus of enemies coming at you and deal with an annoying ass meter that will just kick you out of whatever you're doing in order to make you play as a different character. And then having to sacrifice one of your command deck slots just so you can continue fighting just feels like a really cheap shot mechanic that's made just for artificial difficulty. Another problem that this game had was with its command deck, or more so just how busted several of the abilities were in this game. Why use stuff like Fire Windmill or Thunderga when shit like Balloonga just drains your opponent's health in literal seconds. It really hurts combat when everything is so easily cheesed through. Outside of these problems, however, the game is incredibly solid. The combat is very fun, even with the balance problems of the command deck. The levels were all really cool to look at and go through, even if they were a little on the empty side from time to time. Fantasia being a personal favorite of mine. And flow motion is honestly one of the best mechanics I think they've ever added to Kingdom Hearts. I loved pinballing around the arena and to wipe out enemies. It made battles feel kinetic and fun. It's a good game held back from being better due to just some pretty annoying choices though. So when I was working on this video, I was actually contemplating whether or not to even add this in. Not due to hatred or anything like that, I actually quite like Fragmentary Passage. It's just more due to how this game feels like a tech demo for Kingdom Hearts 3 that's just adding on a bit of story than an actual game. Fragmentary more or less shows off a lot of what's going to be in Kingdom Hearts 3, from the graphics, to its level design, to the form changes, and the appearance of Grand Magic. And honestly, it does it very well, if I'm being totally honest here. If it seems like I'm kind of struggling with this one, it's because it's kind of hard for me to rank this, considering how little is actually in the game. My only real complaint for it is that this game, outside of the annoying objective system that you only really notice when you're going for replete playthroughs or the trophies, another thing that holds it back has got to be the combat. The combat certainly isn't one of the worst combats around, it's not bad, but it gets really boring when all you have is just one combo to use to fight off the Heartless and the very few bosses throughout it. Other than that though, it's an interesting side game that allows you to look more into Aqua's time into the Realm of Darkness, and is still to this day a fascinating story that they chose to tell. 
All right, now we're getting to the more positive stuff on this list. And kicking off the positives is the most recent release in the entire series, the rhythm game Melody of Memory. Before I had ever played this game, I was never even sure if I was going to like it or not. I'm not much of a rhythm game person. I don't hate the genre, I just haven't really played enough to get a full opinion on them. Until recently, of course. But when I finally played it, I was fucking hooked. This game is just so much fun to go through. It's very easy to see how much of this is just a love letter to the franchise. Getting to hear all the beautiful music I've listened to as I've traveled through all of the worlds and fought the Heartless just made me smile, man. Except when I tried to do the fucking Proud Mode on some levels and I nearly snapped my controller in half. Fuck some of these levels. So why isn't it higher if I have so much praise for it? Well, if you heard me earlier, which, let's be honest, my voice is so damn sexy, you definitely have to. You've probably repeated it seven times. Don't lie. You would remember that I said this game is a love letter, because honestly, that's pretty much what it is. It's a rhythm game meant to pay tribute to all of the wonderful music and levels many have experienced throughout the many years this franchise has been around. Hell, there's not even plot-relevant stuff in this game until the final level of it. Not that, that it's a problem, of course. Again, it's much more meant to be a love letter than an actual game. And it does that very well. I will say, though, that after playing a few more rhythm games, I think they should have added a little bit more depth to it, as most of the time you can get through a lot of levels just by massing X, as it really only requires split-second gameplay on higher levels, which can be kind of boring if you're only playing on standard or beginner, and as a result its monotony really starts to kill extended gameplay. Which kind of sucks, because with a little bit more depth, it'd probably be remembered a lot more. But I still love it, and I guess I could say it's the equivalent of it's a decent rhythm game, but a fantastic love letter. So we started this video off with its remake being the worst one on the list. And now we're at the original GBA version, and let me tell you, this version is so much better than the remake, it's actually kind of insane. This was the Kingdom Hearts game I actually grew up on, so I thought for a bit that I might have been a little bit biased towards it. But after replaying it via emulation, I can fully say that this is still a really fun and good game. The concept of Kingdom Hearts and card-based combat may be weird to some people, but I honestly found it to be really fun. I love the split-second card-based combat of the GBA version, the fast-paced action of card-breaking an enemy, and launching combo after combo to kick your opponent's ass is so goddamn satisfying that you just want to crack open a nice cold beer whenever you're done and drink and say, you got smoked, boy. I kind of wish I didn't say that, to be honest. Anyways, moving on, it also has a very interesting story that tackles the concept of false memories and the concept of truth, and it just sucks me in a lot more than I ever expected it to. This game also introduced what was known as Reverse Rebirth, a second story you unlock after beating the game where you actually play as Sora's best friend and former antagonist Riku, who wakes up in Castle Oblivion's basement and works his way up from said basement to the door so he can leave. It's a very surprising unlock if I'm being honest, but in all honesty, it is just as good, if not even better, than the original mainline game. But while Chain of Memories is a great game, it is not perfect by any means. There are some missteps on its path to greatness. For one, the bosses. Outside of a few exceptions, pretty much every boss you fight is just a rehash of the fights from one, which can lead to some levels feeling kind of repetitive to traverse. They also found a way to make Pooh's level one of the single worst experiences in any game I've ever played. And last is the combat. I adore the card based system, I've already been honest about that. But man, the slights in the GBA version sometimes feel like they're just so weak that they're just pointless to rely on. It's honestly the only thing I think ReChain did better. Aside from all of this though, you have yourself a very well made game that I believe gets more hate than it deserves. And if you've only played the PS2 version, I beg of you to try out the GBA version instead. 
See for yourself that it is the true way to play this game. The original that started it all. The one who introduced an entire generation to the concept of Disney characters giving discussions about things like the matter of the heart, what the point of true friendship is, and what it truly means to battle for them. It had an engaging and interesting combat system that seemed basic at the start, but held a surprising amount of depth when looking under the hood of it all. Several of the levels held impressive amounts of detail that made exploring their areas and discovering the hidden chests super satisfying. Wrapping this all up was a fantastic story that tugged at your heartstrings with its pure emotion and warmth. Truly a title worthy of the term classic. So, why wasn't this 2 or 1 then? Well, it's time I ripped the bandaid off for you all. This game, while a definite classic, came with some pretty hefty problems when you go back to replay it. One problem that comes to mind is the combat. While it isn't horrible by any means, I actually like it quite a bit, it does end up feeling kind of dated. Attack combos feel pretty slow and clunky in comparison to the smoother, speedier, more flashy combat of later games. It isn't helped that you have to deal with what might be one of the worst cameras on the PS2. The camera of the first game is much more of an enemy than pretty much every single Heartless or Disney boss you beat the shit out of. It whips around like it's trying to follow some kind of coked up hummingbird. Add on to the frustrating enemy magnetism this game has, you get a pretty annoying combat system that has the potential to be so much better if the camera wasn't a pain in the dick. It's still an amazing game, don't get me wrong, but it's one that is definitely very hard to come back to. Well, we're finally here, the legendary Kingdom Hearts 3. The one that split the fanbase down the middle on its release. You either loved this game, or you were filled with such a vitriolic hatred towards it that you spent every moment of every day on Twitter telling people that the series is dead, or that they were wrong for liking it. Sorry, a little personal there. As for me, I loved it. I thought it was a great finale to the Xehanort Saga. I especially loved the combat most of all, though. Introducing Keyblade swapping was just a stroke of goddamn genius to me, and it allowed for some of the most insane combos on bosses and waves of enemies. But that's not to say the game doesn't have flaws. For one, the pacing. More specifically, around the third act or so. The story was flowing very nicely, in my opinion, until we reached Act 3, then slingshotting multiple key story moments like saving Aqua, and then five minutes later you save Ven after the boss. It, it just kept throwing so many overwhelming things at you that needed more time to breathe. It hurt the story as a whole a lot. And second was the difficulty. While I'll admit there were some moments that I found tough, the game overall is pretty much just a walk in the park, especially when you think about the attractions. Oh boy, the attractions. The attractions showed up way, way too much and were way too powerful for no cost. They made every single fight that should have been a challenge completely arbitrary because they wiped out everything. They broke this game wide open. The game still kicks ass though, don't get me wrong, and I still think it's a wonderful entry to the franchise that deserves another look back by many people who gave it shit, especially if they had never played the Remind DLC. That stuff was fucking beautiful. Back to the handheld games with this choice, and the number two spot goes to the surprisingly masterclass of a game known as Birth by Sleep. Now, when I first ever heard of this game, I was actually pretty skeptical of it. Come on, a prequel game set 10 years before the events of Kingdom Hearts 1 that didn't focus on any of the characters we knew outside of the few Disney ones? What would be interesting about that, I thought to myself. Boy oh boy, I wish I could go punch my younger self in the face for thinking that because I was proven wrong. Okay, so first off, the gameplay. While I'll admit I am a bit disappointed that they slowed it down a bit for this entry, I ended up really enjoying it. It felt like they took Kingdom Hearts 1's combat and really fine-tuned it for modern games. Added into this was the introduction of the Command Deck system, one of my favorite additions to the series as it allowed you near 
endless builds and abilities to use for your characters. And speaking of characters, they were fantastic. I love that not only that they had different playstyles, but they each come with their own storyline as well. And that's the final thing I wanted to talk about in terms of this game, and that's the story. The story is actually really interesting to me, as it is far bleaker in comparison to pretty much every other game in the franchise. Like, it's not super mega dark or anything. There are certainly much darker stories, but if you compare it to the rest of the games in the franchise, it's pretty fucking dark. It's honestly kind of depressing. This truly was one of the best games in the franchise to me, though. And it is easily one of, if not the most replayable game. We finally reached it, ladies and gents. We've reached the end of this video. And what a better way to top off the list than with Kingdom Hearts 2 gaining the spot of best game in the series. Every single thing about this game just symbolizes perfection to me. From the incredibly fluid animations, to the graphics that have aged like the finest of wines, to the story that, while a little more simple than the two games before it, is still riddled with immense amount of charm, emotion, and surprising twists, and turns that kept me on the edge of my seat no matter how many times I've played it. And now we get to the best part of the whole game, and that is the combat. Very, very few games have a combat system so amazing that even several years later after I first played it, it's still stuck in my head. Kingdom Hearts 2 is the one that stands at the pinnacle of all of those. Everything about it was so stylish, flashy, and fun. From the insanely fast collection of combos, with a pinch of badass reaction commands here and there to spice it up, and to top it all off, this was the game that gave us the drive form system, allowing you to completely change up your playstyle mid-battle with new forms that would focus on one different kind of stat boosting and combos. And whenever you leveled them up, you would get them for your main form. This made every single fight you entered incredibly riveting and intense. I could go on and on for hours and hours and hours about how amazing this game is, but I'm pretty sure any more of this would just be me dick-sucking it even more than I already have to. Kingdom Hearts 2 is still to this day one of the best PS2 games ever made, and to me, it still holds the title of one of the single best Kingdom Hearts games. Problems? Oh yeah, I guess the uh, levels are kind of linear, I guess. And with that, we have reached the end of our video. Thank you all so much for joining me on this wild adventure ranking my favorite series of games. What do you think of the list? Let me know down below in the comments if you agree or not. Anyway, I'm tired and I'm gonna go kick back. If you like this, do me a favor and like and sub for more content. See you later and have a wonderful time.